Okay, hello. I am Jackson from Modal Electronics. I'm back today with the second instalment of our webinar series aimed at giving a little bit back to you guys <clears throat> and just an opportunity for me to give some tips and tricks on our synthesizers to you along the way. As ever, you're going to have the opportunity to ask us questions in the comments box. I will be there throughout the duration of this answering any questions that you have and we'll loop back at the end um, to answer any of those questions that I didn't get through. Today we're going to be looking at the power of wavetables. We're going to be concentrating on CraftSense 2.0 and I'm going to be trying to um, illuminate how much more powerful wavetable synthesizers are than sort of traditional analog or virtual analog synthesizers. And um, we're going to start off by creating a kind of blank patch, which will really help you to explore wavetable synthesis. If you are kind of a first time user, it can be a bit daunting because there's a lot going on. So I'm going to help you set up this blank patch and then we're going to go and explore through the different wavetables and a few of the different things that we can do after we've made a few of those crucial decisions. Uh, so I'm going to jump straight in. Apologies for my voice going a little bit. Let's just kind of try and get through it and see what we make. So first things first, I have initialized the patch on CraftSense 2.0. You can do the same if you want to follow along at home. Um, this stuff will apply generally to wavetable synthesis. I mean, most of them have <clears throat> really, really similar functions um, anyway. So if you don't have a CraftSense 2.0 or an Argon or one of our wavetable synths, you can try this with something else and you should be able to get most of the way there. The first thing that we're going to do in order to create our blank patch, uh, I'm going to completely ignore the waves. I'm going to completely ignore the filter. And we're just going to look at the envelopes. So I'm going to initialize the patch here. Boom. And yeah, I'm going to go straight over to the amp envelope and I'm going to give it some release just so that I don't get any of that kind of clicky artifacts at the end of the envelope. And I'm going to go into the mod envelope and I'm going to take the sustain all the way down and give it a bit of a decay. So you can see I've got this kind of quite plucky uh, percussive envelope. What I'm going to use it for is to scan through wave one. So it'll scan from the end all the way back to the beginning. So I'm going to assign it by holding the button and just twisting that wave one. So I've assigned it all the way. So what we're going to get is basically this all the way from there, sawtooth back down to a sine wave. So I'm going to increase the decay a little bit. So yeah, that's basically it for the blank patch. Um, we've set up a really, really basic modulation routing for wave one. So now anytime I change the bank on wave one, I can instantly hear all of the kind of defining characteristics, any prominent harmonics that might be present in uh, said wave bank that I choose. And it's just going to really help us to make decisions quickly. Um, you could save this, uh, you know, yourself as kind of a blank exploration patch if you wanted, but it's just really as a means to show you how to kind of quickly audition things and, and, and get a, a good overview of what's there. So we're going to start off by changing the bank on wave one. I'm probably going to just increase this a little bit. So now when I change the bank... Let's go with this for now. So we've set up our basic blank patch. We've chosen the wave. And we're modulating through it. We can hear some cool stuff that's going on. The next thing that we're going to move on to is, it's, it's not really voicing, but it, we're talking about voicing a little bit here, I guess. With CraftSense 2.0, obviously in the last video, if you saw it, I said the first thing you should start with is voicing. And it is really the place you should start with any synth if you're designing a patch but with craft synth obviously it is a mono synth that decision's kind of already been made for us but i also mentioned in the last video our spread function this is where we detune the oscillators away from each other and we do this really cool thing where after a while of detuning and we go to this full detune um, we stack up these oscillators into intervals and into chord shapes <laughs> So I'm going to put it on a minor shape and now you can hear we already have a really, really easy chord patch going on. I'm going to take a wee little bit of modulation off. Just so it's scanning just a tiny bit. As opposed to catching all of that top end. So 
So now we can move on to talk about some of the more traditional features. We could filter the patch. Um, we could add in Wave 2. We could do some really interesting things. And this is one of the things that Wavetable Synths do really well, is adding a second layer. Obviously, we already have way more options than you have in your traditional virtual analog wave. That would just be these kind of sine wave, traditional waveforms. We have so many here to choose from that are really complex and bizarre. But we can go a step further with with usually with wavetable synths and we can employ things like frequency modulation or phase modulation things of this nature that actually um, apply a process to the wave to change the shape of it so we have phase modulation already set up here and use it to uh, basically add more harmonics. It's basically, it's, it's using wave two to modulate wave one. So any of those decisions I make for wave two will drastically change how the OSMOD works. Nice. We have like 16 different types of modifiers in Craft Synth. That's quite uncommon. You usually get a few to play with, but there's a whole bunch of them to play with here, which have really, really different characteristics. So we've set one up already. We have some um, phase modulation. Going. I'm just going to scan through them so that you can hear some of the different things. This is where the crux of wavetables is. We have these wave banks, and then we have these different processes that we can apply to those wave banks, which means that you get thousands and thousands of options as opposed to, you know, five or so on analog or VA synths. So it's very, very cool. I'm going to scan through a few now. You can hear those, and then we'll set up some filtering and talk about some sequencing. So let's set up an LFO just to control that amount there. And I'm just going to increase the rate of that LFO. So you see some of these are really, really soft and subtle, and some of them are really, really aggressive and introduce loads of harmonics. There's things like the D-Res there, which is kind of like a sample rate reduction, kind of takes things down to 12-bit, I think, uh, roughly. Uh, you get this kind of, you hear the top end, that kind of sample rate coming in, which I love, I love this. <laughs> Very, very unique, very, very cool. And that's something that came from the 002, one of our flagship synthesizers from back in 2014. Um, still existing in our products today, which is amazing. Um, now we can move on to talk about some filtering. So we have this basic pad going on. Again, really uncommon for a mono synth. And we can do all of those things to set up the envelopes and do something interesting with um, the filter here. So I'm just gonna set up something very basic just to give us some movement and a little bit of release. Take this down and I give a bit of resonance. Nice. So that's just some really, really basic stuff going on. We've made a modulation assignment to the Modi G and we've used the LFO to scan through the OSC mods and we've had a look at all of the different OSC mods. Now we're going to move on. We're going to talk about uh, the ARP Seek. This is super interesting. It's an arpeggiator, but really is also a 32 step sequencer because we can program it. So when you turn it on initially, you're going to get 16th notes. I apologize. I'd already programmed something in. Uh, if I wanted to go to eighth notes, but I'm trying to get something a little bit less intense and a little bit more of a pattern going on because we've got this pad sound and arpeggiator might be a little bit intense. So I'm just going to have this. Wow, 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 wow. 
So we've got something very, very cool that we can play with now. There's a few more things to look at. Obviously, there's a whole bunch of other modulation options up for us to fill there. We've used two of them. And we have the distortion and the delay that we can talk about to make some really, really interesting things going on. But we basically have this patch already. We, we've, we've basically been able to audition a whole bunch of wave shapes, find something that suits us, and yeah, modulate it and give some nice filtering. We can put some effects on there as well. Super, super nice, super easy, super, super quick. So if you saved yourself one of those blank patches, you could, you know, you could spend five minutes, make something quickly, start again from the blank patch again, another five minutes, you know, you've got a whole bunch of patches happening really, really quickly here. Um, so that's like a nice little overview of most of the things that we can do here in Craft Sense 2.0. And I'm going to wrap up there and we're going to come back and have a little bit of a chat with you guys and answer any of the questions that you might have had. So thank you for joining and uh, I hope that was helpful. I hope you got some cool tips and tricks out of this. Um, let us know what you make with Craft Sense 2.0 if you make anything. And yeah, I will see you in a second to answer any questions. Thanks. <laughs>